Oh, yeah. Well, hello, boys and girls. It's when I feel like it o'clock, and I'm Pearl Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom, as you know. And uh, as you can tell, I just have people coming on the channel all the time. And I found, I've, I was watching, I like to watch YouTube, I like to watch uh, different uh, YouTubers, and then when I find ones that I really enjoy, sometimes I'll reach out to them and see if they'd like to uh, collaborate with me. And I found one that I really enjoy. This is Peyton, Peyton on the radio is his channel. And hey, old boys. Highly recommend you check this out. As it turns out, actually, we're doing similar series together. So you can yeah. check his stuff and my stuff, and we're going to do some of the teams together. That series I'm talking about, as you know, is the every team in the league and what the how, how they've done so far in the offseason and where, they, where they're heading with some of the moves that they made or all the moves that they've made and kind of ranking, I suppose, the moves yeah. that they've made. Um, just so happens, Mr. Peyton and I, as you can tell as his background, are huge Edmonton Oilers fans and are from the Edmonton area actually as well. That just was a coincidence. So it was, it was. a pretty easy yeah, it was a pretty easy pick to which one we were gonna go with. We're going with the Edmonton Oilers and we're gonna talk about all the moves that they've made. Uh, probably gloat a little bit because we or, and stuff like that about what Mr. Holland's done. And uh, we have smiles on our faces. These are Edmonton Oilers fans. Smiles. smiles on our faces. <laughs> For the first time in like, I don't know, did. like, yeah, it's it's like 2005. And still we were sad because we watched Rollison get injured. I, I wish I was old enough to like actually remember that series because I would love to watch my dad flush his Oilers jersey down the toilet after that one. <laughs> but... I don't remember anything from it, and I'm hoping to see some playoff success here uh, sooner or later. But uh, how's your day going? Fantastic. It's going Perfect. fantastic. We're getting beautiful weather here. I, I know. It is absolutely wonderful. Like, I'm looking at a beautiful view right now. It's just, it's been a great day. And uh, you know what? I'm excited to be an Oilers fan right now. I'm also excited to be on this uh uh, on your show today. Uh, thank you very much for having me on and stuff like that. It's going to be an absolute uh, joy to be on. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to talk some Oilers today. I, I've been boasting. I, I talk with Oilers all the time with people and how excited I am. Uh, I've been saying that this team is even better than the Vegas Golden Knights and the Toronto Maple Leafs. And I'll take that. I'm a very hot take guy, but I think this team, without a doubt, I think McDavid will still break any ankles on that Toronto Maple Leafs roster. We've seen him break Morgan Riley's ankles. I'm excited for this team, without a doubt. Right, so let's get into it now. Everybody was, I, I think, before uh, the offseason kind of got into May and L to make moves, I think everybody was kind of on their edge of their seat in a good or bad, in more of a bad way than anything because we've been so used to just porous moves made by the Edmonton Oilers and we're all sitting in anticipation as to what Mr. Holland was going to do with this team. Um, first of all we find out of course that Oscar Clefbaum is not going to be playing this year and uh, we're looking at the first kind of thing that happens is the answer to that and Tyson Berry coming over for a pretty sweet deal I would say. Um, yeah, steal of a deal. What do you, what what was your thoughts and what do you think about uh, him grabbing Barry and in, in uh, to to take uh, Oscar Kleppbaum's place in the lineup? You know, it's it's really hard. I, I've been saying this for a while now with Oscar Kleppbaum. I think it's time. It's not up. He's a great defenseman, but his time as being a top two defenseman for our team is definitely up. Oscar Kleppbaum is just. He's an injury-riddled guy, and picking up Tyson Berry is a perfect guy, right? Like, we didn't have any power play guy. Like, you put up Darnell Nurse, like, Darnell Nurse does, does a really good job up on that power play, but definitely not as great as, for example, Clefbaum. Um, Barry's a great power play guy. Um, I, I think he'll do really, really well in our top four. He bolsters that defensive core even more now. Um, and it's for a one-year deal. It's perfect. It's like... It, you're taking a little bit of a risk. Barry was supposedly, there's other teams were offering him $6 million, and he wanted to come to the Edmonton Oilers. That's great news. Like, I remember the days of, like, no one wanted to come to the Oilers. 
I remember the days of us giving a qualifying offer to Dustin Penner because that was the only player that wanted to come to Oil Town. So seeing Tyson Berry take a deal like this so cheap was just absolute brilliant work by Holland and set up the rest of the off season just to have a great one. Yeah, um, I am more of a Tyson Berry supporter than other people, but I, I see the value in offensive defensemen more than other people. Um, is he stellar defensively? No, but he gets the puck out of the zone. It's nice to have a player that can get the puck out of the zone. And we um, need that. We so need that. We have too many guys that can get the puck off other players' sticks, but then can't do anything when it gets on their stick. And and uh, Tyson Berry certainly does that. Plus, like you said, the one-year deal, they can see how he works out. I see why Barry does this. Barry looks at it as, okay, it's not a great market right now to make a lot of money. Why don't I go to the Edmonton Oilers and pass the puck to McDavid and Drysaddle for 83 games? See how that works Might out as to, well. pad, to pad the stats, you know what I mean? And then the Edmonton Oilers can see if they can fit them in next year, or, and if they can't, then they go a different direction or whatever. Well, it just leaves them with a lot of options, right? You, you, there's so many options because, I mean, you got Evan Bouchard, who's coming up the ranks, who is a great offensive defenseman who... I think we'll for sure take Barry's spot, right? Like you sign him for a year, you get a great defenseman for this year um, and to help you for whatever will happen. Who knows with this COVID era, but for a playoff run, right? That bolsters up your defensive court. And when I was watching the Chicago Blackhawks series, we couldn't get the puck out of our own zone, right? Like you would see us get stuck in our own zone because Adam Larson, he's a great defenseman, but he's, he's a defensive defenseman. Same with Chris Russell, Clefbaum, great but he is still he's a mostly defensive defenseman nurse could say skate up the puck but then he loses it um but barry will be that perfect guy to pass that puck up to dry or mcdavid and i think without a doubt i think barry will jump right back up to that 60 70 point seasons that he was having when he was in colorado We've seen how well he played in Colorado when he was playing with McKinnon and Duchesne. I think the same thing will happen when he plays alongside of McDavid. And I'm really excited to see how well he'll play with this team. I'm really excited to to see how well he'll perform. Yeah, maybe Ethan Bear has a good first pass. Uh, Darnell mm-hmm. Nurse is about an average first pass, but I agree with you. He's very good at skating the puck out, and that's about that's that's a huge value too. But uh, I'm with you on that altogether. And then the big news. I don't know. Actually, was it first? The signing of Kyle Turris came yeah, in for one point six. That, that was the first one, wasn't it? That was the first deal that we made, and uh, I was very happy about this deal because we finally brought in a third line centerman, and it was cheap. One point six five million for the next two years. Kyle Turris. He's been having a couple of rough years in, in Nashville. And uh, we were actually talking about this, me and you, beforehand, talking about Kyle Turris and just how how his career has went and just how well Nashville... Nashville was never a, a goal-scoring team. They didn't have the goal-scoring power, I think, to help Kyle Turris produce. Now, Kyle Turris gets Tyler Ennis and Jesse Pugliarvi, James Neal. He will be on a great power play. I think Kyle Turris will have a great... Um, he'll be a great third liner. And I think when he said in his post interview that he wants to work a lot on his defensive work, which is a huge thing from Kyle Turris. And I think he'll be a great PK guy and somebody great for our third line for sure. Yeah. Well, what I see from Kyle Turris, the Kyle Turris sign, he's never been known to be the greatest uh, defensive player, but he hasn't, he, I never really thought of him as horrible either. Uh, well, what I get from that signing is this team is going to score a lot. Oh, this yeah. Is, this, this team is going for a high offensive, high octane, back to the good old day Oilers. Uh, having a th- This brings a, um identity to the Oilers completely. Like, if you're going to play the Oilers, they're going to score on you, and they're going to score on you from a lot of different ways, uh, a lot of different areas on the ice. And uh, then, again, we do have to talk. But I wanted to, another thing I wanted to talk about Kyle Turris is he Holland loves to do this, bringing back a guy who worked with a coach before. Now, I know he didn't work very long with Tippett, 
But Tippett at least has a relationship with Kyle and had talked to him and saw him when he was young and has an idea how to get the best out of that player. Holland likes to do that. He likes to bring in guys that um, the coach knows well, if he possibly can do so. And I like this move for that reason as well. And also the fact that it's only 1.6 per. It was a, it's a great deal. And, you know, I love the way that Colin works it because when a player knows the coach, the player plays better. And especially when the coach knows the player, because that means you're just going to have better chemistry along the entire team, right? Like we seen it when we picked up Anthony to see you, like he was picking up a lot of players that he knew and it worked out pretty well. Like I think, uh, Tyler Ennis, who we picked up at the deadline there. I think Tyler Ennis worked great, especially when we were playing in the playoffs. Ennis brought that speed and energy that we needed going into the playoffs. It's just, it was unfortunate what happened. It was a, it was a really brutal injury that uh, happened to Tyler Ennis near the end there. Yeah. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, I'll see what Ennis uh, can do. He's had his injury problems, but... Uh... It's not hard to see why. He's 5'9", 161, and he doesn't play like it. Like, even no. that play when he got injured there, that was He was actually, going. He was he, going hard after the puck. Yeah, he actually should have not tried to take on that hit, and he absorbed it. That's what Tyler Ennis does. He doesn't back down from anyone. He kind of forgets he's only 5'9". And plus, it was a really big guy in Kirby Deck. Plus, I, I understood. I think it was Kirby Deck, right, that hit him? I can't I remember. Think so. I think so, yeah. yeah. Kirby Deck is a big boy. Like, he is a really big kid. And not just that, Kirby Deck's young, too. So, he, he was going to go after the hit no matter what. And Tyler Ennis should have knew that, that known that since Kirby Deck's young. He's going to definitely go for that big hit on you. Um and it definitely sucks. And but that, that's the thing, too. Like, the Oilers are so deep this year with what we have done um, with uh, picking up also Jesse Pugliarvi uh, as well on that same day when we signed Turris. Actually, we no, we signed Pugliarvi beforehand, uh, before the free agency. Um, but getting Pugliarvi on the team adds some more depth. Like, it says here on Cat Friendly that Josh Archibald is a scratch. And that that's awesome. Right, our depth is really deep this year, and that's something to be accounted on. Because if we get some big injury, you could throw Josh Archibald or Tyler Ennis or James Neal, or if you don't need one of those guys for one of those games, scratch them. Right, like if you need speed for against like the Calgary Flames, for example, well then you could take O'Neill, throw in Archibald. Maybe you need a little bit of physical, you throw back in Neal. Maybe throw in some more physical people. There's so many different possibilities with this team i'm i'm really excited like yeah. i know i'll probably say that a lot in today but it's been the first time in a long time where i could actually say that this is a bona fide looking like a really good playoff team that does the energy in edmonton here for sure about the oilers and uh you that was the next uh you you segued really well because jesse puyari was uh, the next feather in the cap for Kenny Holland, uh, being able to work with him and uh, bring him back when it looked like possibly all was lost. Uh, it looks Kenny is a great influencer, great heart, and it comes out in shows, I think, and that's part of the reason why they bring Paul Yarby in here. I love the two-year deal. I really do. Like, <laughs> I thought it was just going to be a one-year deal. Like, when I was hearing Jesse Puliarvi was coming back, like, um, from all the, the Oilers analysts, they were saying it was just going to be a one-year deal. It was like 1.5 or whatever, and it was less than that, and it was two years. Pugliarvi was doing great in the Liga. Um, I was really upset personally when he left the team. I thought he kind of like betrayed the Oilers. He said that the Oilers were mean and all this sort of crap that he was saying. I felt like... When this happens, because when Holland and Tippett signed with the team, I was like, oh, my God, like, this team is finally going up. Maybe this is where it'll start. And then Pauly Arby's like, I don't want to play with the team anymore. I felt that, like, hit to fear for me as an Oilers fan. Like, oh, it's just going to happen again. Like, this team is just going to go back down in the, the dumpster fire. But we were able to be patient with Pauly Arby. I'm glad because... I'd rather not go out and do a deal for Elias Anderson for Pulley Arby. I would have hated that. I would have hated trading Pulley Arby again because we did the exact same thing with Yakupov and Hall. We traded them away for nothing. And I didn't want to see that happen with uh, Pulley Arby. Um, 
this guy to have a great year, especially if he gets to play alongside of McDavid. But I do see him playing alongside Turtis at the start of the year until he actually proves himself and when he could actually start putting up points and be a contributor for this team. It's probably going to be the most intriguing thing to see how Pooley Harvey actually does in this lineup after all of that. Um, it would be a feel-good story. if Even if you're not an Oilers fan, to see Jesse grow up and do what he's done and then come back to the team and everything works out well. I think it would be a really good feel-good story. It's going to be a very intriguing. I think everybody now is rooting for Pooley Harvey, that he was able I to, think so. to grow up and do that and come back. And, the, but the and, thing about this Oilers team as well, the Oilers team has grew up. Like, McDavid has become more of a leader. Leon Drysaddle as well has become more of a leader. I think this team overall has become more of leaders. We were a really young team when Pooley Harvey was on this team. We didn't have very much leadership. We were a bunch of bandits, right? Like, there was a ton of a-holes on this team. And I understand why Pulley Arby left because the amount of turmoil that we had on this team throughout the rebuilding years was horrible. The things that we heard about what happened to Sheldon Surrey and tons of other players on this team, it was a really, really bad decade of hell for the Edmonton Oilers. So I'm yeah. glad to see that this is where we're where we are now and we're seeing this team growing up. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's um I know, so I got two more guys that I would like to talk about. Um, one is the more undermined, not really thought of uh, acquisition that I think was a fantastic acquisition. Um, I'm still surprised that he really hasn't got more of a chance in the league, and that's Alan Quine. I think Alan Quine was a great pickup for. The Oilers. Um, everywhere he's played, now I'm doing this off the top of my head. It was the New York Islanders and Calgary, from yep. what I remember. Uh, I every time I watched him play, I always had to ask myself, why is this guy not getting more minutes? Uh, I, he 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 plays the game. Wow, he it does great in the AHL. <laughs> wow. He has awesome points in the. I, I think he can steal a spot. I honestly think he can steal a spot. I think um, Edmonton Oilers fans are going to be really surprised at how much talent this guy this guy has at 27 years old. What do you think about the acquisition? You know, I didn't do too much research, to be honest with you, when we picked up on Alan Quine because I thought he was just going to be another AHL guy for the team. But looking at him now, like, in 2014-15, 61 points in 75 games for the AHL squad there. And even in the NHL, he's done really decent. And... You know what? That that's that's great. Like we need more depth, and, and that was the biggest thing last year. Like we had some big key injuries, but we didn't have players to jump in the lineup to fill those holes, unless you wanted to use like your young guys that you had on the squad, right? You add Alan Quine, who I think will definitely, like you said, he looks and as a twenty-seven year old, he's producing a lot of points. He hasn't been given that that for sure fire chance, and I think he will be given a chance. Right? There's, we don't have very many big depth centermen on the Edmonton Oilers right now. Like You look at it, you have Jujar Kara, and then you have uh, Quine and Gatton Haas, and that's really it. That's all you're really looking at for our depth centermen. So I think adding Quine to the team is perfect. Uh, and also, uh, talking about our depth signings that we've done, Anton Forsberg as well. Uh, I do like that signing of Anton Forsberg. Um, the way that he has been playing, I think he could even maybe make a crack into that spot of maybe replacing Mike Smith as a backup goalie coming towards this upcoming season. Uh, the thing, yeah, and um, I agree with you. It's going to take, for Forsberg, for some reason, he gets in the NHL and he gets in his head and he can't put it together. He's had de He gets good AHL numbers, he plays well, comes up in the NHL. So I'm thinking that obviously they feel that they're – uh, goaltending coaches have uh, a line on how they can help him mentally be okay when he gets in the NHL. I don't know if it's anxiety or whatever it is, but that's been the difficulty for Forsberg. He yeah. has the tools. He's been wanted by several teams in the league for a reason because he has all the tools. It's just, can he get his head there? I think we could get his head there because you look at Mika Koskinen, right? He jumped right from, I think it was the KHL, right to the NHL, right? Like, 
And that that's a tremendous leap for a goalie because from the KHL to the NHL, that's a big difference. Like, it, it really is. Um, so for us, like, I think we maybe could make Anton Forsberg into a really good goalie. But you never really know with goalies. Like, you could take a look at a goalie and say that this guy's elite. But you could have something to happen, like, with Rick DiPrieto or whatever, right? Like, goalies are so unpredictable in how they play. Um, Forsberg could potentially be a great goalie, or he will just be a career AHLer for the rest of his life. But still, it's a great move. Um, will help that AHL team, because the AHL team last year was complete garbage last year. Um, and especially for a lot of our young players, we want that squad doing a lot better than what it was last year. Now, I guess I actually there's two more players now that you mentioned it. And I'm going to bring up the, the first one that I'm not really a fan of either. And I know a lot of people aren't either, but I am rooting for him because he's a warrior. And you know who I'm talking about here. Smith. Smith. Oh. Signing Smitty was uh, like kind of let down for me. Uh, he did look, he's a warrior, but it looks like his body just can't hold up from what I saw last year. What, what do you, what do you think there? You know what? I, I love and hate Mike Smith. I have a love and hate relationship. It's one of those ones with Mike Smith. And you know what? I love the guy because he's a, he's a gritty player. Like I, I love him because of the fight that he had with Kevin Talbot and just the way the guy's been playing throughout his entire career. He's just been playing with um, a huge – he's underrated a lot. A lot For throughout sure. his entire Absolutely. career. He was underrated a lot. Totally agree with you. And – Mike Smith, when he came to the Edmonton Oilers, I'm like, okay, a decent goalie for a year. It should be a smart idea. I mean, he wasn't too great in the Flames. And he came to the Oilers and not he didn't do too bad. I mean, there was a lot of times where I was like, we shouldn't have played Smith here. We should have not have played him. And especially game one against the um, Chicago Blackhawks, we shouldn't have never played Mike Smith game one. We, we, it should have been Mika Koskinen's job game one to play. And I don't care about experience. Mike Smith has only been played, like, he played one year for the Phoenix Coyotes. He made it 16 games, and then that was really it, and then played for the Flames. Mike Smith, compared to Mika Koskinen for playoff experience, wasn't that much. So, for me, it was a dumb idea. Mike Smith, there wasn't very much out there. There was Ryan Miller, and that's just about it. There wasn't very much for goalies. And Mike Smith, for me, it definitely was a horrible signing. But in the end, who else were we supposed to go for? There wasn't very much out there. Um, now, I'm hoping that we don't play as much Mike Smith as we do. I'm hoping Tippett doesn't want to... I mean, Tippett really loves Smith. There, There's a, definitely a sign of that. Um, I'm oh, hoping sure. we play Koskinen a lot more because Koskinen was great. Fantastic. I think he's a starting goalie for sure for the next few years. Um, but... For a grading on Mike Smith, I would give it a C- minus because there was nobody there in free agency to pick up. But also, it was horrible because we picked back up Mike Smith, and he was also the key reason why we lost a lot of the games that we lost. Yeah, I wasn't a really big fan. Uh, I guess they were left out in the lurch with all the other goaltenders not wanting to go there, and they had to do something. That's what it appears to me anyways. Uh a lot of people, you mentioned Koskinen, like Markstrom just got $6 million a year. Koskinen's numbers were almost, were almost the same. I don't know what people crap on Koskinen so much, seriously. Like, the uh, thing is, Koskinen had the same numbers as Vasilevsky. You take a look at Andre Vasilevsky, he had the same numbers on, on as Andre Vasilevsky, just, I mean, less games. But you give more games to Mika Koskinen, he will perform. He performed against the Chicago Blackhawks. He played great. I think Mika Koskinen, he's very, very, very underrated. And not a lot of people talk about him. And um, I remember this one guy on Twitter is like, Mika Koskinen's good enough. We don't need Jacob Markstrom. We don't need, yeah. we just need a good backup goalie. Mika Koskinen is our starting goalie. And I don't think Tippett really sees that. But I think he has to this season because we're not going to be able to rely on Mike Smith. We're not. He's not going to be able to play another 39 games this year. He's only going to be able to play a good 20, 25 games. We're going to have to go. And Mika Koskinen played great in his first year. A 906 still is a really good, solid season for a goalie. So I, 
I fully believe in Mika Koskinen. I know there's a lot of fans saying that our goaltending is really bad. Yeah, it doesn't look too great, but that's because a lot of people are just looking at Mike Smith and not Mika Koskinen. Uh, I think Mika Koskinen's underrated as well. I'm a little concerned with how many games he may have to play this year because of Smith. Uh, I hope if Smith is is injured, he tells people instead of trying to fight through it. And yeah. we can go out and get another goaltender if we need to, because I think that's one of his biggest issues. But last one, uh, we ha- I would like to talk about, because at first I did not like the signing, but the more I think about it, I don't mind it. And that is Chris Russell back again. Uh, what do you think about bringing Chris, o- Chris Russell back on the deal that they gave him? Uh, it's a perfect deal, I think. I think it was $1.25 million for a year. And... You know what? I like the deal because, of course, it gives us space for the expansion draft. That's the main focus of this deal, I think, uh, for Peter Holland. Uh, not just that, Chris Russell's a veteran on the team. He's been playing for the team for a while. He's he was part of the team that made it to the playoffs originally there. Um, he's been through rough times here in Edmonton. He's a great leader. Um, he helps out a lot of our defensemen. Like, we have seen it before. Matt Benning improved a lot with Chris Russell, I think. Um Chris Russell is a guy where you could put him anywhere. He's a great PK guy. He blocks a lot of shots and just overall plays great. And I, I don't mind him for another year. Definitely not for $4 million again. I'm glad we don't have to pay him that much anymore after this year. It's a good deal. It definitely was for the expansion draft. Um, I don't see Russell coming back after that one-year deal, though. I think it, either he gets picked up by the expansion draft or he um, or he stays on the team. Yeah, what? Um, brought very good points. Brought up a, really, a lot of really good points there. I'm not a huge Russell fan. That he plays in the defensive zone a lot too much and all of those sort of things like that. But he has been a warrior. Sometimes things are. I think signings are made more by perception than actual on ice. A lot of ways. I don't think he's a defenseman. The five six is fine, um, but. Um, the perception in the room is that Russell is a warrior, and uh, the perception in the league is that Russell is a warrior. And here's the thing that Kenny Holland knows better than almost any, or at least as much as any general manager out there. And one thing we desperately need in Edmonton, and that's the ability to sign free agents. And one way to make sure you can sign free agents is if you're taking care of your veteran players. Who wants to sign a free agent contract with a team that doesn't take care of their guys that have been there and been through the wars? Right? I remember the biggest example of that was Sheldon Survey. We signed him to a really big deal during kind of our grace period where we're trying to be a playoff team, but we really weren't. We signed Sheldon Survey to a big deal, and he, I think he, can't, I can't remember what injury he had, but he did something to his shoulder. He had like a really bad infection, and the organization just told him to go F himself. Like he, they legit didn't care about his injuries and really didn't care really much about him. Like he even, po- I, I can't remember where it came out, the article, but it was on Oilers Nation and uh, it was a horrible article to read. Like I was reading it and I'm like, this is how our organization was. And now seeing that we're staying loyal to a lot of our players like Chris Russell and giving him a nice deal. And even Tyler Ennis, right? You're giving him a million for one year, a lot of teams probably wouldn't give him that. A lot of teams would probably give him a lot lower than a million dollars. But hey, Tyler is here's a one million dollars to to keep playing on our team, to keep playing on that depth wise, and and that's showing, right? We didn't buy out James Neal either, which is also showing that that loyalness to James Neal as well. Um, but I, of course, I think we're probably going to buy him out next year. Yeah, um, Ennis is a good ex- is a good example where he was replaceable on the market, but. Holland keeps, he re-signs guys. In Detroit Red Wings, when he was with the Detroit Red Wings, for the 10 years before he was there, uh, when he was general manager for them, they, I think he was longer than that, but for a 10-year period, nobody made le- no team made less trades than the Detroit Red Wings. Mm-hmm. The Detroit Red Wings generally don't trade their players away. They believe in loyalty. They believe in building an organization that cares about its players. And in that way, he could bring free agents anytime he wants. And that is an extremely thing important thing to have, especially for an organization like Edmonton 
that has had a, a very difficult time either keeping free agents and signing free agents to come to Edmonton. Of course, well, McDavid helps out too. Yeah, yeah, he does. I mean, he helped out with Dave, Tyson Berry. He personally gave Tyson Berry a call saying, hey, come to Edmonton, man. Like, play on the top power play line. We'll set you up and we'll we'll give you tons of points, right? Like, I, I've never seen somebody like a Tyson Berry caliber take a, a cheaper deal instead of going to a bigger market and getting paid more. I don't see that very often. Not like, it's very no. rare that I see that in Edmonton. And when I seen that deal, I was looking at my phone, and I'm like, hang on, Tyson Berry? I'm like, I look at the deal, I'm like, 3.75? I'm like, no way. I'm like, that's a steal. That was a great deal. And I, I never see that. Like, I never, never in my life seen the Oilers make a move like that. And it's it's great to start seeing that improvement of this Oilers market because it's a great team. It really is. It's a great city. It's a great team. More players should come. And with the way that we're building our roster right now, it's looking amazing. Wow. Uh, this has been Peyton and Peyton on the radio. Uh, this, this, uh, this young guy, as he's stated a couple times, has not seen a lot as far as uh, the Edmonton Oilers. But I'll tell you, this guy has got talent coming out of the yin yang. When I saw him, I was like, this guy is amazing. Uh, keep an eye on, on him and his channel and all the things he does because he is, he is, he is great. And this guy is fantastic. I'm so glad to have had him on. And I'm glad all of you have been here uh, that have watched this. I hope you've enjoyed uh, having him and uh, as much as I have. To subscribe the bell go over to his channel Peyton on the radio subscribe hit that bell and hit the like button there as well we'll be doing more of this together oh you can, hell yeah. you can watch me over there he, he'll be back over here and uh the frolic will be abundant my friends it's been awesome having you that's our full 42 boys and girls have a great day lots of love to you